the higher five meters high and you have to carry that back to, to Switzerland, it's, it's really not very good. So we tell them to send it in in, in printed form because also the electronic um, manuscripts have proven to be complicated in terms of formats. Sometimes you cannot open them. So we really insist on the traditional expose in the, in the, in the we have just changed at the agency. We now accept. We now accept email. We also will not. I will never take a manuscript. No. Uh, I'm much more likely to lose it. Um, and you know, if it, if, if the, I, I mean, we've not really had a problem with format, with okay. stuff not opening. Okay. Um, I don't think. I mean, I'm trying to move. Maybe, maybe we have. I've not personally had a problem. Mm. But in fact, we now much prefer it to come by email. Uh, we all have electronic readers. Uh, generally, if I'm going to be honest with you guys, we open it up, we read the first page, and then we reject it. Mm -hmm. So it's very economical. Uh, mm -hmm. Otherwise, you might have to post it back. Postage might, you get these funny little international coupons and so on. So, I have a quick question on that basis. I mean, you're talking about, I'm assuming, fiction. Yes. And non-finished manuscripts in the sense not laid out. Yes. What is it like for someone, <laughs> what is it like for someone to actually finish an in-design document on a factual book? Will publishers do like a, what we call in the music industry, a P&D media, where they print and distribute it? No publisher can do that. Um, uh, publishers don't like, I mean, for instance, it's very, um, <coughs> it's considered very bad form to send in a manuscript um, with the design for the cover. A lot of authors like to do that, but it's not advised. Publishers like to think that they know more than most authors. And the way to submit a manuscript is simply as a Word document. Uh, unless the nature of the book involves design, in other words, you can't really um, show the book without designing it. In this case, it does. Then you would put in your covering letter because of the nature of the book. I have actually done some design work, but I would completely understand if you wish to change it. Yeah, because, words, because every publishing house has a corporate design uh, in which they publish their books, and it's, it's very important to, that this book can be included in, in one, of the, uh, one of the lines of books they have. Sure, but see, that this is what I'm saying. In, in the music industry, about 10 years ago, maybe even longer, people actually, the music industry just stopped doing A&R. It stopped signing up a lot of talent. And people started giving them finished recordings for them to distribute, for them actually a distribution way. I mean, the publishing industry doesn't do this, you don't? Well, publishers don't do that. They, they're publishers, not distributors. There are distributors. <coughs> you can go and print the book and get it distributed as a distributor. Can you do that really so easily? I mean, would you, get you can do it easily. Will you? Is it as, is it as effective as getting a publisher? No. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. But you know, what, what, isn't the tail wagging the dog? I mean, what, why do you have to design the book yourself? But this is the interesting thing. Is what I'm saying. In the music industry, that is now an accepted procedure where people just do that, and it saves obviously the. No, but I'm asking you. But why do you have to be the designer of your book? I think it's something that's going to happen. I think more and more people as e-books become more popular. Well, obviously with e-books you can design yeah, yeah, But the, then you get back to the, the circular question, you know, how are you going to tell people it's out there? Right, so that also comes back to the situation. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's no... Um, sorry, they, they, they couldn't find a hotel room last week. Um, the... Um, there's a saying in advertising, you don't spend money advertising something until it's already selling. Um, the real problem is, uh, if you've got access to distribution, whether it's through Amazon, whether it's through iTunes, whatever it is, that's fine, but, but you have to be able to tell people the book is there. You know, you can tweet, you can blog, you can have Facebook pages and everything else. But you know, you're in, I mean, how many Facebook users are there? 500 million. So, you know, we are all drowning in information. We don't actually need any more books. There are more books being published than the world needs. You know, we're, we're destroying the planet because we're cutting down too many trees. You know, if someone could just find a way of producing paper that didn't require trees, they'd get the Nobel Prize. Um, the real question is, we ought to go back a step and say, why, why do people write? 
because a lot of this is driven by the fact that there are hundreds of thousands of people who write. And I would recommend a lovely book by George Orwell, um, who wrote 1984 on Animal Farm and so on. This is a little book called Why I Write. And he said he was looking into himself, but he thinks it does apply to most writers. And he, he says there are four reasons that relate to the vast majority of writers. And the first and most important reason is sheer egotism. And the other reasons are immortality, wanting to make the world a better place, and wanting to get back at people who put you down. Um, now, all of those are perfectly valid reasons for being a writer, but if you're asking a publisher to invest money in you, whether it's in advances, whether it's in production, whether it's in promotion, they've got to believe that that book is going to make them a profit. And if you go back to what Casina said, you've got to find a publisher who's going to be right for that book. Uh, yeah, it's a waste of everybody's time. I have a question, because you referred to some sort of predictability also with respect to investment choices. Um, is it true or how do you feel both about if an author proposes his expose and is it sort of um, useful to have done a little research when you can say, okay, this book reminds of this and that book which has reached so many readers and so, so do the, the market research already or is it supposed to be once again, we are a very traditional publishing house and uh, we do not operate with, uh, um, um, with market research uh, of, of audience, <coughs> of possible audience for books. We are only interested in, in the quality of the actual written manuscript. And um, I think it depends. If you've written a book about um, a teenager who is a magician, and you say, well, you know, this would appeal to the same people who bought Harry Potter. Uh, that's not only not useful, but that does that, that makes will make people think less of you. If you've written a book about um, how to grow bonsai versions of redwood trees, um, something or very very specialised, then possibly uh, some research would be valuable. But most authors fall into the trap of looking at big bestsellers, which are in some way similar. They fail to make the judgment, which is, I think, what Cassini was talking about, which is critically important, is do they actually write as well as they write? Secondly, they often don't realize. I mean, for instance, we're all very aware of all the born identity and all these you know, current adaptations of Robert Ludlum. Um, if you write a book like that and you say, well, it'll appeal to the same authors, you have to remember that Robert Ludlum published many books over a period of 20 or 30 years. He built up a big readership. Now, if you could get Robert Ludlum to give you a quote, that would help. But just to say it's like Robert Ludlum, but no one's ever heard of me, is a disconnect. Yeah, and that kind of that's not market research, actually, what you, I think you were describing. It's just uh, doing this, you know. No, uh, because I heard in the, on the American market, I mean, this may be not the right appropriate um, response, uh, I heard, but there, you, unless you do a little research where you could also describe in which genre your book fits and, and, and what that's, the that's fine. Be different. That's yeah, fine. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because if, if you, the risk there is a lot of writers write a book thinking it's in one genre when it's not. Mm -hmm. That people who work in publishing, film, television have a generally a good understanding of the conventions of the genres. I get books sent to me which uh, uh, are described by the authors as it's a thriller, but it's not. It's a mystery, and that just means <coughs> the author doesn't have good judgment, and that puts me off. So I think you have to be careful about jumping in and talking about a subject you as an author may not really know very much about, thinking that it makes it look very professional. And this is really what maybe then in the end, if the publisher accepts your manuscript, the publisher will use as a marketing 
instrument of uh, reminding the possible buyers of the book, this is maybe similar to this, yeah. that that's very yeah. widespread this technique of, of yeah. marketing. Um, as, it's, as it is in films, I mean, we know this aggressive marketing from the director by, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, all yeah, yeah. by. Yeah. And um, of course, there, there's uh, lots of, of need for, for marketing <coughs> arguments um, to, to grab. But, but the real problem is when you, when, when someone compares their book, they've never had a book published, no one knows them, to a book by a well-known author, it, 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 the, it, the comparison fails because you, you're not taking into account that there are millions of people who already know about that author and nobody knows about you. So the similarity is not important. The differences are more important than that. So. Any other? Yeah, so I think it's mostly a question to be seen that um, um, to draw a parallel to, to writing for film, if you were aspiring screenwriting, you've um, had uh, some shorts running, doing well at some festivals, and then you approach somebody with a screenplay saying, look, I've done well at festivals, and that usually helps a little bit, you know, with people who will be on the first page of the industry. Is there something similar in publishing, maybe, that you say, I've uh, self published electronically onto verbals and show you know so, so, so many copies will that make any difference to whether you will have a look at this manuscript or not yeah it probably helps because it shows that there's a person who has already some experience in writing and um, has had some some success maybe it's an it's an additional information in the end what counts will be the quality of what you provide that's that's always the crucial point but of course, I mean, if, if somebody sends in a manuscript saying, oh, I've written sort of lots of screenplays, or I've, I've already published in, in various uh, literature, literary magazines, but never a, a big novel, um, then of course, um, it's, a, it's additional interesting information that this person is sort of serious about writing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's always good to know. Yeah. I mean, there are lots of prizes for short stories, as indeed there are uh, you know, prizes for short films. Uh, I think I think the point that Christine has made is twice now about the quality of the writing is most editors and I think most agents, if they receive a book which doesn't work, you now it's something to do with the way it's structured or whatever doesn't work, but the quality of the writing is wonderful, will probably meet the author. I, certainly agents will. Um, you know. Basically, what we're looking for is people who have writing ability, uh, even to the extent that um, some agents provide storylines to their clients who don't know what is saleable, but they write really well. The rare thing to find is someone who writes really well. Stories are easy to make. You know, stories are everywhere. It's easy to come up with storylines. It's very difficult to write well. So the rarer, you know, uh, precious metal is, the more valuable it is. That's why someone who really writes beautifully is someone that publishers want to work with. There's no logical reason why someone who has a wonderful writing style, who's able to create images which really resonate with authors, should necessarily know exactly what publishers are looking for. And that's where editors and agents can make a contribution by marrying up a particular writing ability. I've sold authors whose books don't work on, simply on the strength of the quality of their writing to publishers who respect the writing. So you say, why don't you write that? Well, so you, you go to an editor and you say, you know, I don't think the book works, but I'd like you to read a couple of chapters. They ring you up and they say, the writing is fabulous. And then we all sit down together and we try and work out what can, could that writer write about. It's not necessary that um, <coughs> the manuscript is perfect right from the beginning yeah. on. If you feel that there's a quality in it, um, that's why we have edit editors and editing departments. Uh, they, they really love to work with the authors on a text. And, and for example, we just um, 